Today's episode is sponsored by Caviar. Fresh from the Russians. Fresh from the Russians. Did you get that at did you get that at the Russian Cafe? Yeah. Yeah. Russian Cafe on Winchester. Oh yeah. Check it out. We love Russia. <laughs> Welcome to the Crow Man Show. I'm Crow Man. This is Crow Man 17. Chatelet, brothers and sisters. I have Mr. Gold today with me again. So, we went on a camping trip for our birthday back in uh, March, from the March 1st, from March 1st to March 5th. Uh, so we'll just tell you about it a little bit. So on our way there, storms, thunder, hail ice wind right here in the Bay Area March 1st I'm not sure if you guys remember that um, it ended up moving south so our trip all the way down there as we were driving all day it, we were basically in the storm all day and and the guy Dr. Green Thumb who had gone with us aka Dr. Green Thumb as he calls himself he had one idea for wrapping the stuff on the roof, and I had another idea for wrapping it on the stuff, uh, uh, wrapping it on the roof. And our, we didn't collaborate very well, so it we had to keep stopping in the rain to try and readjust everything and put everything back on the roof. We had to stop like three or four times. It was ridiculous. Actually, we got there, and when we got there, my God, it was just ice wind. Fortunately, while we were there, it didn't really rain all that much. You've got to talk! Well, if you don't talk, they're gonna think that you're just sitting here. Talk! <laughs> well, I mean, you just keep talking about the weather. I want to kind of jump on. Let's on jump straight to what? Fucking Dr. Green Thumb, the elephant of the trip. Elephant of the trip. Go for it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you, you really want me to do it? Yes. Cause, I mean, I'd like to hear you first, because yeah. after after I'm finished, it's going to just be gratuitous at that point. Uh, you, uh, you're going you're gonna to say this. <laughs> this is you. This is all you. Oh, man. I want to hear your version of the events, and I will meeting that guy, uh, elaborate. Meeting that guy was probably one of the biggest mistakes that affected that trip, because I didn't think he would come in contact with you on a social level. And that fucked that trip over so hard. Like, you could have brought Brian, the other Brian, you could have... But no. <laughs> you yeah. gotta bring an ex-convict who... Who... Goddamn, this guy was crazy. Beyond fucking... What was that one movie? Fucking One Flew Over the Cuckoo Nest? Or <laughs> beyond that shit. You have some some very unexpected behavior. Behavior, very inappropriate, inexcusable behavior. Where should we begin? How about the very first stop, the gas station? When we in the desert? Yeah. Oh yeah, we stopped at the gas station and we were only going to get the basics just to get through this first night because it was already nine o'clock in the night when, when in the evening when we got there. So we stopped at the gas station. We went in and. As I only had a little bit of money with me until the money on my card went through. So I, I grabbed what I could. I grabbed what I could afford, and I held it up. We were in line, and I said, okay, look, I, this, I only have a little bit of money. This is all I can afford right now. And I held up some hot dog buns and some mustard so that we could just have some hot dogs for the first night. And I said, if there's anything else you think you need to get, get it. And he hold, he, he turns around, and he holds up a, a, like a, an extendable hot dog stick, and he's like, I'm going to get this. And I said, okay, well, maybe you should... May, we ha I said, we have lots of hot dog sticks very similar to that. Maybe you should spend your money on something that we might need for dinner tonight. And his response was, don't tell me how to spend my money. That was the gas station. Is there anything at the gas station that I missed? Fucking, well... Let's jump into what happened three hours later when we were making dinner. <laughs> Go. <laughs> fucking. We all have 
what, what do we have? Mustard? Only mustard. Mustard, buns, and hot dogs. Yeah, and you know, that's not too, that's not bad. That's just, you know, that's probably your regular wiener schnitzel. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Shit, I like, so. this guy comes in and he says, do you guys got any ketchup? And he said, nope, all we got is mustard. And this guy, this motherfucker, <laughs> he explodes on us like he goes nuclear, like he's our fucking parents or some asshole supervisor on a field trip. And he's like, I told you to get, <laughs> to, <laughs> that I could get all this stuff because I told you I have all this money and I'm not mad about the ketchup, I'm mad about the, the principal. And, <laughs> and he, he's, Steve's just like, calm down. And he's like, don't tell me to calm down. You don't know me like that. And like, he just gets really loud. It, and, yeah. and we're in the fucking desert. This guy is starting to act like he's about to fucking stab us in the in the alleyway. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just him standing alone by himself. And then the rest of the group just kind of sitting back and watching him throw this tantrum. Yeah, and it freaked everybody out. People wanted to leave immediately. My best friend left, like, on the spot. Well, not on the spot, because he didn't have any way out of there. He was like, Steve, dude, I got kids at home. I don't want to be here with this guy. You got to get me home. He, it's funny that he said that, oh, this guy probably just wanted a free ride. Your friend probably just wanted a free ride to get somewhere, which is kind of mean. Like, you, don't, you don't know my friend like that, homie. I think he's smart enough to know that my friend wanted to leave because of the episode he had. I know he knows that, but instead he tried to. He, instead he took a shot at my friend. Okay, whatever. Go on. Uh, fucking. Remember Will? I would have. I would rather you brought Will on this trip. He was. He was a William, but with attitude. No, he was like Will, with a, with a log in his ass. I don't want to make it all about the guy who almost ru who pretty much ruined the trip. Uh. But yeah, he was basically like the guy who went with us last time, a total control freak. Just had to be, I know more about everything than everybody else. You know, I, and it's funny, it's funny because as soon as I told him about this guy who went with us last time, you know, I thought he would be maybe a little understanding, but he didn't react very well. And that was a, that was a red flag for me. Like, I think we probably in some way just described him. And that's why he's not giving a very good reaction because he knows he's a control freak and that's what he's going to be doing. He's going to try... Excuse me, let me fix this. Because he knew that that was his behavior and that he was a control freak and that's what he was going to do. Yeah. At one point he was just like, you know, it could have just been us three and we would have had a good time. But, like... He said that? Yeah, Carl did. Oh, um, Carl, yeah. Um, fucking... Carl pretty much stayed in the car most of the time. Yeah, you know, nothing to get... Well, because, a little... I mean, yeah. Mostly because you know who, yeah. and you know why. Yeah. Okay, definitely plenty against Brian, but nothing against everybody else who was there as a whole. But it was definitely the best once everybody else was gone and it was just down to us three. It really was. Did you ever finish, um, did you ever look up, uh... The sign? The, yeah, the sign. I keep checking it. Just so you guys know, I do keep checking for the Trump sign that we put out there. trees out let's check it out so the T is supposed to go over here you can see the R but these big ass bushes in the way making it really difficult we got to get them out That one hit me in the crotch. Let's move to this side. Yeah, take that, Luma. Yeah. Eat my dust. <laughs> so 
we had fun. It's this morning when I woke up, these mountains were completely white, covered in snow. I got a few pictures, but it was it was ice cold last night. I was the only person sleeping outside. He roughed it. Keep checking for the Trump sign that we put out there. If of all the things that I went out there to do, that was the one thing, the one thing that I actually was able to accomplish and finish. And I want to start a contest that I have not prepared yet, but I want to start a contest with you, my viewers, to find the coordinates of where it says Trump in the Mojave Desert here in California and have some sort of prize if I could think of what what my, my followers want from me that I could provide you to whoever the first person is to locate Trump in the desert. But yes, I do keep checking up on it, and it hasn't shown up yet. If you you can find it on Google Earth, but it's you'll have to look very very hard. Winner we'll gets fifty bucks. It's yeah, fifty bucks. The prize will be fifty dollars. But we'll, we can do that for right now. I might up the ante if I get a good reaction from you guys. For right now, the first person to find Donald Trump in the Mojave Desert, Trump. It just says Trump, all capitals will win a $50 gift card. I think that's just, I think that's fair. We'll do a gift card. We'll do a gift card to, I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> to Toys R Us. To Toys R Us. To Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> to Star Cooks. To Chevron. <laughs> give you a $25 gas card. No, I'm just kidding. I really do want to see if you guys can find it. So it will get easier eventually. As the weeks and months go on, eventually Google Earth will update the, the location where it says it. And when that happens, it'll definitely make the mission, your mission, a lot easier. So um, do, do, do look into that. Try to find that. And I want to see who can find Trump's name in the Mojave Desert. You said doo doo. Doo doo. <laughs> Holy shit, I said doo-doo. Yes. So, I also apologized the other night for my live stream, or a few minutes ago. This guy's got some crazy karaoke skills, right? And he's got some oh, yeah. crazy stumbling over chair skills, too. Oops. <laughs> but yeah, we've been, we, I've been starting to do some local Bay Area young Republican meetups. Even though they're called young Republicans, they're not always younger people. Yes. Some, there's one... Pretty sure there's people there in the thirties or like thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. I've seen them in all all ages. Some people sometimes it's just it's sometimes it's just a group of younger uh, conservatives that to get together and, and meet up. And but sometimes there are actually other people who are much more politically involved. And if they're going out, they have flyers and they have uh, you know, other stuff. I actually the one I went into that the one that I went to in San Francisco on 420. There was a lot of people there like that. And uh, there was a people. There were people there who were giving information and giving you know like meetup stuff. That's another thing. I really gotta get gotta get on this meetup. Apparently they got this thing called meetups, where there's a bunch of Trump supporters that all get together and they do they do. They do this. They do the young Republican meetups, but apparently they also have they have house parties. What? Yeah, there was a party on the east side apparently on inauguration day that was set up by Trump supporters, and you could have found it on uh, uh, meetups or something like that. We could have been there, but I didn't even know. And I'm sorry. Well, now that you just gave me this information, we have we know definitely get into a party next time. Absolutely. Sure. Like we're for another karaoke bar and like. I do the same thing where I go up and sing. You do that, but you gotta say something a little... You gotta throw something in there about us or about the movement. Right. You gotta say Trump 2020 or Free Kekistan. Alright, alright. Right. You're on the yeah. mic, man. Alright. People what are if, listening. What if like, <laughs> I know I'm just like... Ree! <laughs> Fuck all you armies! <laughs> Get kicked out of the park. Oh, we were yeah. back when you fell off the, the chair. That was my, my biggest fear was that you were gonna... You were gonna get 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 kicked out. Let me know. Anyways, you also saw my live stream from not that long ago where I was out on the Monterey Bay fishing. Uh, I know that was a really long six-hour clip, so I shortened up 
the video and here are the highlights to uh, uh, here's the highlights of the fish that we caught. There's a fish. We got a fish. It's a salmon. We got one. Bring him over here if you can, Greg. Let's go back to the camping trip. Uh, how about when we uh, found that blown up looking pickup truck? Yeah, so we were out there and we found a pickup truck. And I live streamed that and I got your guys' comments. And I did some research afterwards and found out that, yeah, actually the Mojave Desert is the biggest hot spot in America for um, dumping bodies. When someone commits a murder, I know there's a lot of other shady stuff that goes on down there. You know, drug smuggling and cartels and other stuff. All that crime <laughs> <laughs> definitely leads to, leads to a lot of people trying to dump bodies in the desert because it's so big, it's so vast, it's actually surprisingly easy to hide something out there. I think we got lucky when we found that pickup truck because that, that pickup truck didn't look like it had been there for very long. Definitely. It, it, some at some point after our last trip last year in April and when we showed up again this year in March somebody jumped dumped that truck there because when a truck is sitting out there with no shade in the Sun for months years at a time you know, it has a, an effect on the paint and if you can see you can see from the video the paint I, I mentioned this still looks like it was somewhat fresh yeah this thing so Exactly, that's what I'm saying. The paint doesn't look that old. Like it hasn't been out here for years. <clears throat> I got myself a souvenir. <laughs> Save the license plate, yeah. What'd you think of that truck? Fucking, I thought it looked sick. <laughs> What'd you say? It just needs a new fanny belt? Yeah, yeah. Just a little tear in the fanny belt. <laughs> Maybe a new tire. The air pressure was low. And also no. ding in the windshield. <laughs> ding in the windshield, yeah. Uh, ding in the windshield. The windshield looked like ca melted candles. <laughs> you know that thing got hot. Oh man, what about uh? Hmm. Every time we went to get what was it firewood, we end up getting like a shitload more than we were supposed to. Oh yeah, I would go out for firewood and we just load the car up with all this. It was basically driftwood, um, desert driftwood. And you at first I would kind of wonder how this driftwood would get out here, but when the desert is when it, when something gets dry for so long, it doesn't get very much water for so long. The, the ground gets very very hard and stiff, and so when it finally does rain. It floods because the water can't soak. Just it can't soak right into the ground. So what happens is when it, when it rains and all this water comes down from the mountains, because we're actually fairly close to the mountains, all that wood from wood debris from the hills just washes into the desert, 
and the water just keeps flowing and it just keeps pushing it and pushing it and spreads all across the desert. So you get wood everywhere. But yeah, no matter how many times we kept going out there, we just keep finding more and more wood. And it's not even all like a bunch of branches, really. It's not always branches. You find construction debris. I found two by fours and one by fours and four by fours. It's, it's pretty funny, actually. But yeah, um, I wouldn't recommend cooking over it. Fires were great. You can check out my Instagram, crowman underscore 17, if you want to see a lot of the really cool pictures from from the camping trip. Me, Mr. Gold, my brother, mm -hmm. a few other friends. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're tripping balls. We, we went out and yeah, we, uh, I took some ayahuasca, some mescaline, but it uh, didn't work. I actually, actually, uh, Gave my gave my buddy, the guy who went with us, a hundred and forty dollars for some bunk mescaline, and he promised me that he'd get me back. And here we are. How long has it been? I don't think he's coming back around anymore. He's two months. He's all talk. Yeah. I, I'm still. Here's the funny. The ironic part is I'm still holding on to his stuff. The only obligation I have to keep holding on to his stuff right now is a moral obligation. I just don't feel right about throwing it away. Eventually, well, he's got to come for it. You could give it to me. What would you want? And it's nothing really that valuable. It's like his personal stuff. What kind of personal stuff we're talking about? I don't know. I like guess like, hygiene shit and comb and hair gel and toothbrush and I don't know. I think he's got a couple pairs of clothes. Some, maybe a what pair about of clothes. his little mini fridge? That wasn't his. Oh. <laughs> it came with the room. Yeah, phew, that was fun. Okay, let me tell you about this part. There was a part where we're sitting in the car because it was blistering wind out there on the first night, and when, when the mushrooms kicked in, man, we were just sitting in the car, and this dude, the dude, gets out of the front seat, and he goes, the fire's dying. He gets out, and he's like, I'll make the fire go again, and I'm just, I'm sitting there in the front seat, and I'm watching, I'm watching him make it out. And the way that wind is blowing, you can't see much at first, but when he starts throwing all this wood in the fire and all these sparks and flames just start coming up yeah. and they're just reaching high into the sky and, and suddenly his clothes are just coming alive and he's like dancing in front of the fire like ooga 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 it was like him, he had a big ass load of wood in his left arm and he was just like whoo yes <laughs> it was actually pretty cool and then this guy gets out and he's got the American flag and is, and the wind is just blowing it, from the fire pit that, towards the car but there's a distance and he's just like fighting the wind with the flag and he's so just fucking <laughs> strong wind and the flag's flapping and I'm just sitting in the front seat just tripping balls watching this like <laughs> what the fuck this guy's Captain America and he's like he's gonna make it through this blizzard he's gonna get there to that fire and he's gonna he's gonna you're gonna do, he's do, whatever he's doing, he's doing it, and it's courageous. And this, this is a photo moment right here. But too bad nobody else can see what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, but now we can. Now I can smell what you're smelling. But you can smell what I'm. <laughs> you can smell what you dealt. Yes. Oh God. So second day was it the second day or the third day? It was the second day. We wake up. My brother just loves to sleep in, man. so we got up like, what, 8.30, 9 o'clock or something like that. We probably hung around the camp site for a while, we got the fire going for maybe like an hour and a half, and then we decided, let's, we, okay, we, yeah, it was the second day, we, now we have to go back into town, we gotta get stuff we don't have. Alright, we need supplies. So, my brother's still asleep, everybody else is awake, we all get into the car. I don't even know if he heard me, but I'm like, Carl, we're going into town, watch the camp. Uh, it was at least a half an hour, I gotta tell you that. It was about a half an hour. We left, we came back, what did we get? We got firewood, we got, I don't know, all I remember is getting cactus firewood. Cactus cooler. Oh, cactus cooler, oh yeah, I gotta get the cactus cooler, man. And you're out there in the desert. They got that down in L.A., cactus cooler, down in Kern County, in L.A. County. <sighs> Good stuff. Um, Especially when you're in the desert. Uh, again. This guy complained about our food supply, and he had his own, like, cupboard in his tent. You're just gonna keep bitching about Brian. <laughs> He's a fucking dickhead, what do you expect? I'm gonna try to focus a little bit more on the positive parts. But this part, I'm just gonna say it was funny, though it wasn't positive. We come back to the camp, get back to the camp, as soon as we pull up, I see the chairs are in the fire. Or 
uh, these chairs are blown into the fire, and my brother is just now crawling out of the tent. <laughs> and he stands up, he scratches his head, he looks around, he's like, well, the chairs are gone. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I said, Carl, tell me the truth. When did you get up? Just now? Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, it, I don't know. It's like almost ten o'clock by this time. Whatever. Mm. I I managed to salvage them. That was funny, and that wasn't the only time. Oh my God! Tell them about when the big gust came in and destroyed everything the second time. This was like on day three. This is on day three. It was like one chair that caught on fire, and then then the rest of the chairs caught on fire. Yeah, I had one good chair left, my red chair, and. We had my we had a metal chair too. One metal chair. <laughs> we had my dad's canopy, and I was afraid to set it up because of the wind, and I just knew that the wind was gonna was just gonna wreck it, it was gonna ruin it, and and finally the wind died down on the third day, and I had you know, I said oh someone I don't know somebody said set up the canopy. I'm like all right all right fine set up the canopy, <laughs> but don't forget to spike it down. This guy. And my brother set it up. So they get it all set up, and they leave it and walk away. <laughs> Ten minutes later, huge gust of wind just comes in. Boom! The whole fucking campground. Everything that wasn't staked down, or the car, or the boulders around the fire pit was just taken out. And... I stood up to watch the canopy just go up into the air, just, and and I just and I look and I'm looking at everybody who was literally standing right next to it, and they're all just <laughs> and I just wanted to, I wanted to there's two extremely important things that I had to say and I had to choose which one which one do I say one is either what are you doing standing there get it. The other one is, you didn't stake it down? So I said, you didn't stake it down? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't stake it down. And they're literally just standing there watching it blow away. And I was, oh, I fucking just flew past everybody running, not even realizing that all the chairs had just been blown by. Everyone's focusing on that. No one's paying any attention to anything that just, anything else. And as soon as I fucking, we say that, I turn around and we, I'm like, we get it. I'm, I'm pissed because I'm. this is my, my dad's canopy. I just close it back, close it back up, put it away. Do not bring it out again. I'm really mad. I, turn, I walk back into the tent. I, I walk back to camp and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at our chairs. The last, my last chair is now smoldering in the fire pit of the place. That really no, pissed me like, off. It was like getting salt and pouring on an open wound. Yeah, I was like, wow, did this really just happen? Insane. Anyways, day four. We had, Carl had uh, rationed out the burgers so we'd have enough to divide evenly throughout the week. And Carl made it very clear that he didn't want anyone, like... He was... Yeah, they're this really specific. You can't just go willy-nilly eating them whatever the fuck you want. And, well, well you know, Brian wanted to have a hot dog. No, no, he didn't even want it. He, he looked at it, and he's like, this looks like shit. He cooked it. And so he says. This was his story. Or, I mean, I don't, I don't remember exactly what he said, and, yeah, they cooked it anyway, and he didn't even finish it. Yeah, he, he, sa he says that he cooked one, took a bite of it, out of it, said it was bad, threw it away, ate the bread, cooked another one, took a bite out of it, said it was bad, threw it away, and ate the bread of that. He said he did it to two hamburgers. Really? That's, what he, that's what he said. So, after, after he left, we cooked the hamburgers, and... They were fine. They were totally fine. And they were just hamburgers. They were bison burgers. Expensive. So, pretty low mood. Low thing to do. I could have eaten it. Yeah, we did, man. We had we had a hamburger feast. After you left. Right? After you left, yeah, it was fucking fun. Hell of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yep, yeah, we had rifle, or not rifle, we had pellet guns, we had a bow and arrow, which was faulty. Um, we had fun playing target practice. There was a lot of work that I wanted to do that we just didn't get around to doing, and it, you know, really ended up sucking. Shit. I really like shooting those, those little targets. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to try and go again for a 4th of July. Me, There's... To be honest, I don't think I can go back there unless it's like really hot because... You know, that was, that was too much. The, the, the first three days was just brutal. Brutal. The last two days was nice and sunny, but those first three days was like ice, ice wind. You ever play Pokemon? You know that move, Ice Wind? Yeah, that's what it was. We were just there was a, there was a Pokemon at the at the foot of the mountains I that had, was just using constant Ice Wind on us. I had layers upon layers of clothing. Jeez, I was I was stupid about that. I just thought that I don't know what I never thought to put it on a second pair of pants, so I didn't. I found three pairs of pants. I had two pairs of jeans and then sweatpants over that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's. That's the show. Well, Enjoy. that. So, <laughs> thanks for watching. Really, I'm glad I finally was able to get through to um, get to the point of telling you guys about the trip. As you all know, Mr. Gold got really sick and he was in the hospital for like a solid month, twice off and on. So we finally got to take care of this, and uh, I hope you enjoyed all the footage. And please like and subscribe if you're new. I do appreciate the support. Like I said, I only do this now because, basically, because I enjoy doing it. You know, I did try to, I did try to make this uh, part of my income, but you know, I'm shut down, and I don't know if I'll ever reach a thousand subscribers. My my subscribers are iffy, but please like and subscribe if you're new. I do appreciate it. Uh, I, I do love my fans, and I'm sure Mr. Gold does too. I uh, hate you guys. You guys mm -hmm. suck. And so, like I always say, if you haven't yet, it's already been a year and a half. You gotta roll up your sleeves. Get to work and make America great again. Seriously, guys. Thanks a lot. Much love. Chatelet. Ree! Ree! Chatelet. Come back next time.